What's up, times three? Is Vaughn the serious star, serious V, the self-help sensei, coming to you live from the airwaves, back like I never left. Let's get right into it. Hopefully, everybody is doing good today. Today is episode seven of self-sufficiency, part three, synergistic energy. This is what if episode seven. We just keep rolling on with these, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I got I, all my future episodes for this series planned out already, and we just gonna keep the ball rolling, the snowball effect rolling. Now, I got a few talking points when it comes to self-sufficiency and sustainable housing and energy. So let's get right into my talking points, you feel me? Talking point. Number one, Ichi, Ichi, one in, Jap uh, in Japanese. Now, we're gonna talk about sustainable housing. And we're gonna bring up a specific known, well-known figure who builds sustainable housing. I believe I spoke about this guy before in a previous podcast. And if you have not done your research, Please, in today's time, it's important to do your research on these types of topics because the current weather of society that we live in, pretty much. We're talking about earth ship biotexture and the founder, Michael Reynolds. So what the heck is an earth ship? Like, Vaughn, what's an earth ship? I heard you talk about this stuff before, but I don't know if I actually paid too much attention. So let me go right back into what an earth ship is. Pretty much so, this guy named Michael Reynolds, um, he came up with the idea of using recyclables, like heavy duty recyclables that can be used for sustainable building and housing. A lot of this is happening in like the Central America area, uh, Mexico and things like that. You can also actually uh, do a visitation to this location and actually assist with building one of these structures. So an Earthship has sustainable energy within it. It's pretty much environmental friendly and it doesn't cost as nowhere near the price that it costs to build a regular normal house that you see in society today like I live in Philadelphia I'm in a brick home brick row home a earth ship has nothing to do with being built in the manner that this structure of the foundation has uh, going on within it now not only that you're able to build an earth ship in different manners as far as different variations sizes levels things like that it's not so much uh, restricted to the basic housing structure that we know today within uh, like modern day america and yet normal cities where you have the basic type of construction even in the suburb areas these locations they're earth friendly, environmental friendly. They're built pretty much from recyclables. So you're saving recyclables because we all know today we're big on recycling. Uh, they're pushing forth, like the powers that be are pushing for sustainable energy. And I talk about sustainable energy all the time in my podcast. I just talk about it in a manner where it can benefit everybody and not just a small group of individuals. I talk about sustainability in a holistic manner for human evolution. Now, let's go to my next talking point because human evolution and sustainability leads me right into my next talking point, which is off-grid living. This is one of the big things when it comes to self-sustainable housing, self-sufficiency, and all that good stuff. We, we see a lot of these movements today with the uh, van life when you 
when you build up a camper van pretty much to travel across America, uh, you know, park up, sleep in locations and, and just soak up the environment and do your thing and, and, and roll out to the next vacation or location that you go to and, you know, explore. That's a small scale of off-grid living. Now, Earth ships completely take you off-grid, fully off-grid. And when we talk about off-grid, for any individuals who don't know what off-grid is, you might think that off-grid is just sleeping somewhere in the dirt. You know what I mean? Like somewhere in in the woods and, and not having any type of housing structure or anything like that. Pretty much off-grid is taking your energy, the way you your house functions off the grid of the wiring system. This brings into this manner wireless energy. I'm gonna get a little more into that in my next talking point. So off-grid living, earth ships, van life. I'm not too big on anything else that doesn't require that doesn't uh provide you with a solid structure so i'm not going to mention any other types of structures at the moment that doesn't have to do with anything like that but uh another form would be the shipping container movement at the moment whereas though you got small shipping containers that a lot of people are building into their own structures their own housing structures and things like that and this you can there's multiple ways to power and uh, to have water, to have all the needs in these types of structures. For one, a small way to get your electric. You got all types of solar panels. You got monocrystalline, polycrystalline. You got multiple companies who produce solar panels. We have other means, which is geothermal, which I don't even think that the residential, uh, the residential field of housing has tapped into geothermal at all. I, I'm not really aware of that, but if you are aware of that, put that down in the comments section. We got wind. Not only that, there's other forms of energy that we possibly don't really even know about that scientists know about. Always keep that in mind. So these are the energetic methods of staying off grid and not linking yourself to the pretty much the wiring system that it uh, provides your every receptacle in your house to get the, the what the 240 the 120 whatever it is here in america that's what we go by uh 240 120 as far as voltage is concerned you can have the solar panels with the inverters that inverts your it converts your energy into use into a ac type of energy it goes from dc to ac Also, going into the farming solution as far as indoors. You can also have solar panels that's powering anything that you need for your small farming location. I talked about that in a previous podcast when I was mentioning aeroponics, hydroponics, and aquaponics. Now, let me go into my next talking point when we're getting here to this doorway of wireless energy. A nice amount of time ago, there was a guy named Thomas Edison, and there was also a guy named Nikola Tesla. Nine times out of 10, or 10 times out of 10, you're familiar with Nikola Tesla more than you are with Thomas Edison, especially because we got the Tesla company of today. But that name comes from an individual. So if you haven't ever done your research on Nikola Tesla, do your research on Nikola Tesla. Let's go into a little brief history of Nikola Tesla, which he was a scientist, a very innovative scientist. 
who looked at science from a holistic manner as far as nature and science together. He also ha uh, had philosophical views, spiritual views that he also incorporated into his scientific exploration. He's one of the biggest reasons as far as why you even have the company Tesla today. The name came from this guy. I'm not going to say that he invented the concept of wireless energy because I believe that a lot of this stuff was here, if not hundreds, but thousands of years prior to a lot of our existence. That's for another episode. Now, Tesla had a lot of inventions, but he did not get a lot of patents to his inventions because for one, this dude was like an introvert. He was not built for corporate America. Now, going into his, one of his main opponents, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison had a lot of influence and a lot of financial control over the power system here in America. Which is one of the reasons why we use power lines today. So when you go into the history of Nikola Tesla trying to push forth wireless AC energy, you got Thomas Edison pushing DC energy. One is alternating, alternating current, the other is direct current. Direct current is how we get power to our homes today. Nikola Tesla had times where he demonstrated wireless energy, wireless electricity being able to be used in a nice distance from the power source. There's also stories that this guy made a machine that was so powerful it could actually power the entire world. But it also had some supposedly some catastrophic effects when being tested. And that's, it's almost like a damn Death Star. The invention that this dude came up with when it comes to that. So that's a little brief history on the war of currents. And going into another talking point for sustainable housing. One of the main things that should be a, an, an important factor is the push for, for minimalism. Now, this topic is a little what we consider taboo when it comes to being on your social media and stuff like that. Because then we, we start talking about consumerism. Having a consumerism or a consumerist, consumeristic type of mindset, we constantly are abusing, using, abusing resources that does not need to be constantly used and abused. Especially when it comes to the technology we use today. Even the technology that I'm bringing these topics and ideas to you guys with. Minimalism is the complete opposite of consumerism. So a self-sustainable society did not exist with a consumeristic type of mindset. So it has to be a less materialistic viewpoint that is introduced within society to get us to this point. I'm not pushing forth the idea of a one world government. I'm not pushing forth the idea of a illuminated type of mindset to, to push humanity forward. I'm talking about from a logical perspective. The consumeristic mindset, for example, buying clothes that means nothing just because of the brand. Having cars just to, you know, flex just because when a car is nothing more to get you from A to B. Just these small things that we do within society that we don't realize contributes to a consumeristic type of mindset is one of the biggest problems and the biggest issues that will be 
an opponent towards a self-sustainable society, introducing self-sustainable housing, self-sustainable living. Consumerism cannot exist with minimalism. So these two cannot exist in the same world. This is why it's a lot of chaotic energy when it comes to you being a minimalist and you're in society that's completely consumed with consumerism from even when it comes to information because our attention span is getting shorter and shorter because of the so the influence of social media these things cannot exist within a minimalistic type of society to push forth sustainable living sustainable housing sustainable energy for example if we had to lessen the amount of energy we use as far as electric water and things like this when we already have the mindset of a consumeristic mindset and i'm guilty of this as well if i stay in the shower for a little for over 20 minutes do i really actually need to use that much water no hell, heck, no hell no i don't need to use that much water i've washed up with way less and got just as clean but we become so used to this because as children we grow up in this consumeristic type of mentality from our parents they teach us it we teach whoever we are influent who whoever we influence if we have children uh, nieces nephews friends and family we influence it and everything it's a holistic mindset within society to be consumers to have a consumeristic mindset and the only way of the future is minimalism because we already see the issue with resources. We already see the constant battling uh, in politics between uh, this resource, that resource. We already see the push forth for sustainable energy. We already see whole societies putting forth ideas and concepts to build cities. For example, the line. If you don't know what the, the line is, go to go to Google, type in the line. It's a concept city where a lot of the resources and a lot of the actual environment of that area would be completely untouched. Whereas though we would pretty much have a vertical style city that you would live in. Am I 100% for the type of construction and type of environment? Might not be, but it's a, it's a push forth for a concept for sustainable living. There's other aspects, pros and cons, that come with those types of environments because it is a smart city. And we all know with smart city comes uh, extreme overuses of surveillance, we all know that with smart cities, it uh, becomes a scenario where we're constantly affected by the environment, the technology and things like that. But it is a concept for future movement within society, within society for sustainable living. Now, just Go back to the top, the talking points that I went over, which is the Earthship. Google Michael Reynolds. Do some research on what an Earthship is. Off-grid sustainable living. If you are unaware of that, do a little more in-depth research of off-grid sustainable living. Also, the War of the Currents. There's documentaries on the war of the currents between Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. Then the topic of minimalism, which is one of the biggest talking points I have for this podcast because it is the exact thing that is needed for futuristic, sustainable living. It's find the Sirius star, Sirius V airwaves. The self-help sensei, 
coming to you live from the airwaves and you already know i will be back like i never left